from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Julia Leggett, Acquisitions Librarian at the Library of Congress. It's my pleasure to introduce author and illustrator Stephen Savage. It is said a picture is worth a thousand words. Steve is an illustrator known for his style, which conveys complex ideas and emotions through simple lines and beautiful colors. His wordless picture book, entitled Where's Wars and Penguin, received an honor from the International Readers Association and is also an ALA notable book. Steve's editorial illustrations have appeared in dozens of famous newspapers and magazines, including the New York Times, the Atlantic Monthly, the Washington Post, and the Wall Street Journal. In 2008, Steve received a gold medal from the Society of Illustrators. He teaches at the School of Visual Arts in Manhattan. Steve's books available for sale at the bookstore downstairs. He will be at the book signing from 5.30 to 6.30 this evening. So now, boys and girls, mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome author and illustrator Steve Savage. Thank you very much, Julia, for that wonderful introduction. How's everybody doing today? I almost broke my back carrying my own book up these stairs here. Is this not the largest children's book you've ever seen in your life? So this is a giant, so Julia had a normal sized book in her hand. This is our giant, super special national book festival copy. And it is so heavy that I need help with it. So I would love it if uh, a couple of parents and a son or daughter or child could come up and it could be a it could be a family effort at holding this giant book do i have any, any volunteers ooh ooh yes please over yes please come up do you have anybody with you or you, you want to handle it i think you oh come up please thank you i'm steve bart bart mm -hmm. nice to meet you bart i'm steve Graydon. Hey, let's hear it for Bart and Graydon, everybody. So would you like to? Yes, please. So maybe what we'll do is, Graydon, maybe you'll help turn the pages. And are you two related? You are? Yes, OK. You're the dad. So um, Graydon, you're going to help your dad turn the pages, OK? So we're going to start here in the cover, and then you just open like this. And then you turn the pages like that. And you guys can work together. You guys work together, don't you? Yes, here we are. All right. So we have our, we have our readers with our giant copy. So here's the, in addition to this being the biggest book you've ever seen in your life, this book is special in that it has no words. And the story is told just through the pictures. That's part of the reason we have it so big, so that you, we can all look at the pictures and you can tell what's going on. Here, let's, we'll move this up here. Is that, yeah, okay, perfect. Can everybody see the book from back there? All right, so we're going to be reading the story from the pictures, and um, we're going to read it, and we're going to sing it, and we're going to sound it out. It's a little bit different from your normal picture book. So why don't we practice right now on the cover? I'm going to have, let's see, how about I have everybody on this side? So if you're on this side of the camera, you're going to say, where's Walrus? And if you're on this side of the camera, you're going to say, Anne Penguin. So this side, where's Walrus? This side. All right, one more time. Very nice. So you guys have the idea. So we're going to read this book together. And you've got your, you're ready to do some singing, right? OK, good. So let's, uh, so uh, you guys want to turn the open? So here we are. So here we have our, oh, are you OK back there? Are you back there, Graydon? OK. Graydon, you can, you can, do you want to stand next to me over here? And you can sort of, you want to stand right here? 
Mark, can you handle the book? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I think we've got our system down. So here we have, so we're going, we have a wordless adventure of two friends, walrus and penguin, and where does it look like they might live? Anybody? Yes? They live in a pool, and where is that pool? Yes? Say that again? In the city, and where in the city? Let's turn the page and see where exactly these two friends live. Oh, first of all, here they are. And then next page. You guys are doing great, by the way. And so where do, they, where do, where do our two friends live? They live in the zoo. Who's been to the National Zoo since they've been here this weekend? Has you, Everybody's been to the zoo? Wow. OK. So they live at the zoo. And, and if you're at the zoo and it starts to, what's happening? It's starting to rain. So what would you do if it started to rain? Yes, tell me. You Say that again. You get an umbrella. And some people decide they just want to, here, let's turn the page. They decide they want to leave. So this starts our adventure of the walrus and penguin. And they decide that, that since some people are leaving, they are going to leave too, because they don't want to be in the zoo anymore. So they decide to duck down into the subway. And you know, who's this chasing them? There's another person in the story here. Graydon, who's that right there? That's a police officer. What, he's also, he's a special police officer. He lives at the zoo. He's the zookeeper. So he's got to make sure. He doesn't want them to escape. So let's see. They duck down in the subway, and then what happens here? They got to hide from this guy in the subway, yes. So here they are. You know, they, and, you know, he's not too bright, the zookeeper. So they got to hide from this guy. And uh, so wait, so... Um, let me ask you, Graydon. So that's the uh, walrus, right? No. With the and the penguin. He's holding the penguin, pretending. No. Where is he? Tell me. All the way over. Oh, they're over there. Okay, Graydon, you've got it figured out. Okay. So why don't we do this too? We talked about, you know, this is a pretty crazy adventure. So I think we need to do something crazy right now. So everybody on this side, can, what, can you cry like babies? I knew you didn't sign up for this, but can you cry like babies on this side? Oh, ah. Okay, and then moms, you're on this side, and you've got to kind of shush the crying babies. So babies, you're crying, you're unhappy. Moms, okay, babies, you're unhappy, you're hungry, you're tired. Moms, quiet. can you quiet the babies, please? All right. And he doesn't know what's going on. He just thinks the babies are crying and moms are upset. All right, should we turn the page? Okay, they got to hide from this guy. They don't want to get caught and get sent back to the zoo. So they're at the newsstand. Here we are. Why don't I have everybody on this side say, you ready? Extra, extra. Extra, extra. And you say. And you say. Where are they? I don't know where they are. Oh, that's a newsstand, but I don't know where they are. Okay, let's, we got we to gotta move on before they see what happened. Okay. Ooh, here we are. So what's, let's see. You know, he's, he, we, they've got to stay one step ahead of this cunning zookeeper. So they, you know, they do what they can, you know, to sort of avoid and blend in and do what people do in parks. So I think we shouldn't worry about that. We should just sort of feed the birds a little bit. So here, I'm going to, you get, are you hungry, birds? Here you go. Yeah, here. So, so do you need some? Do you need some? Yeah. Are you hungry? Yeah. yeah. Here, here, let me here, please. Oh, you're so cute, you little birds. Yeah, they're so hungry. Now don't fight over the bird seed, okay? Here you go. Oh, you're so cute. All right. Okay. I gotta feed the birds. The zookeeper's over here. I gotta. Oh, here you are. Right? Here's some. Ooh. A little, a little cute gray one there. Here we go. There we are. All right. So next page. How are you guys doing? Bart, you, are you getting tired? You're good. All right. Okay, so now it's getting crazy. Now they're headed down the river. And uh, you know what? Graydon, there's a song that comes to mind on this page. Oh, very good. Okay. You know, you know now I'm going to tell you, my book agent warned me against this. She said, don't do a round. She said, just sing it. Just sing. I, can, are we up for a round here? OK. Come on, let's prove, her. let's prove that we can really do this. So this side, you're going to start first. So you're going to say, row, row, row. And as soon as they say, row, row, row your boat, then you start, OK? 
And then you guys are going to, no, you're fine. Okay, you ready? Row, row, row your boat. Keep going. Where are they? Where could they be? I feel like I'm back at summer camp right now. I don't know. All right. Thank you very much. Give yourselves a big hand. Wow. I feel I've always wanted to be a choir director. This is a big moment for me. All right. So next page. I mean, how long can this go on? I mean, the zookeeper, he, we know he's not too smart, but he's going to catch on at some point. Okay, here we are on Park Avenue. All right. So it's very traffic -y right now. He, the zookeeper can't find them. It's, there's lights are flashing and there's sounds. Can we have honk, honk over here? And beep, beep over there? And let's just all do it together as loud as we can. The traffic in Washington is so bad. It's as bad as New York. Thank you very much. Okay, still, Zookeeper still isn't catching on. Next page, please. Oh, wow, here we are. Very nice. So I guess that's where they were going. They were headed in their limousine to this big opera performance. Can, can I have, this, is a, this, was a one, this was one of the finest operas ever performed in the city. Can I have everybody stand up and give our opera performers a standing ovation? And what do we say in Italian when they're when we're cheering? Bra, bra. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, oh no, you're cheering then, of course. All right, so still not catching on. I think he's spotted him though. I think the zookeeper is catching on. Let's turn the page here. Oh, let's put this one back. There we are, perfect. All right, so can anyone, can anybody down there spot where the zookeeper is? This is this, he's this tiniest little speck in this page. She'll come up and point to where the zookeeper is. You wanna come up? Yes, please, yeah. Do you, are you sure that you can find him? There he is right there, very good, thank you very much. So he's there, and he's a tiny little speck, but he says, I think I see somebody out in left field. Walrus is kinda out in left field. So, but you know, just as he's thinking maybe he should go onto the field and get him, he realizes that it's the bottom of the ninth, bases are loaded, it's count is three and three, it's the pitch, swing, and it's gone, it's going, it's going, everybody, it's going, 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 I hope he catches it, going, going, going. He's gone! Oh, oh no. Oh my gosh, okay. Uh, hello, well, let's see, 911, yes. We have a walrus down in left field. Yeah, we need, a, we, yeah, oh, he's, he's, he's not, yeah, no, he's not responding. Yeah, we need an ambulance right away. Oh, it's, con oh, I hear the ambulance. I hear, thank you, he, it's, I can hear the ambulance. It's on its way. Thank you very much. So what happens when we, fall down and we're kind of like, oh, and we're really hurt. What, where do you go? Wait, say that again, what? Hospital. You go to the hospital? Let's see if they go to the hospital. Ooh, here we are. Okay, so we need to rush him into ER. It's not too bad. He just has a bump on the head here. And what's, wait, what? I just see one. I see that one right there. Oh, well, you know what this means? Okay, two things. This means that the zookeeper First of all, is found. He's the chase is over. He's found his his uh, the people he's been chasing, walrus and penguin. But you know what? Walrus has found someone. Let's take a look and see what happens here. Ooh. Okay, everybody. I think this deserves a big aww. Aww. All right. You know, it's a beautiful thing. That's all I can say. Next page. I think Walrus is in love. What's that? Do you think, do you think they're, that's his girlfriend? Okay, so they're going to be boyfriend and girlfriend, but you know, I think it's going to be bigger than that. What do you think might happen? They're going to get married. You think they're going to get married? 
What, do you, what does everybody else think? What? The kids understand. The, the adults don't understand. They're like, marriage, don't do that. No. Just, just, just date for a while, okay? Hey, this is picture book land. I think, do you guys think that they should get married? Yeah. Let's turn the page here. You know what? Everybody on this side is part of the, is the groom's family. Congratulations. He's a wonderful, wonderful walrus. Everybody on this side is with the, uh, the bride. And I think they have just said their vows, and we need to sing the song. Can we sing it? Da, 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 one more time, keep going. This is a joyous moment. Oh, can we cry a little bit? I cry every time I go. <laughs> Here we are. Can we hear it for our wonderful page turners? Wow. Can we hear it for our interpreter, please? Can we hear it? Can, a big round of applause for all of you. Thank you so much, and I want to thank the National Book Festival, and I want to thank my publisher, Scholastic, and I want to thank Jennifer, who came with me today. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, guys. So if, do, we, do we have some time for a question or two? Yes? Do we run out of time? Oh, I would love to. The answer to your question is, is yes, get married. Make sure you end your life with that adventure solved. Hi, tell me, tell me your name. Okay, my name is Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie. Hi. Um, I'm a classroom teacher. Oh, great. And, like, I've seen teachers in the past, like, model, like, wordless picture books, and everyone kind of struggles with reading them. Do you tend to, like, have your book read, like, exactly like that in a classroom, like, very over the top and, like, making it very obvious, <laughs> like, what inferences and stuff, like, especially for the younger early childhood crowd? That is a wonderful question, Bonnie. I really appreciate that question. I was so nervous yesterday when I imagined myself standing on a stage and reading this because I felt like I know how to make the book, but I don't know how to read it. So I actually, what I did was is I sat down with my six-year-old daughter and my wife, and I started reading, and they said, no, 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 don't read it that way. Say this here. And, I, and they helped me figure out, I guess, in a way that was the most kid-friendly, the most fun, the most interactive, so that everybody was involved and it wasn't me just saying, here's what happens, then they go to the hospital. And I'm just um, basically narrating the pictures, which isn't any fun for anyone. So, I mean, I think the beauty of a book like this is you can do it over the top, you can do it funny, you can do it, you can, it can be a, dis you, a certain a discussion about the zoos can ensue. It's, it's, I have a friend of mine who says this is like a magic book. It's, every time you read it, it's different. It's the beauty of it. There isn't a standard text. So, I mean, I, I, how did you think, did, how did it go today? Was it, yeah? All right. Jennifer, did you write everything down? Okay, perfect. So I'll just have my transcript and I'll memorize it. No, it's, what's great is, is it's sort of like if you do a performance, like if you are in a play or a stand-up comedian, I think you figure out what stuff works and you use that over. So over the course of the next couple of months, I'll remember the things that were funny and maybe cut out the things that weren't. But it's part of the fun of the book. I think it's something that also scares people, too, because you can't just read a set text. So, but thank you for that. Where did you go, Bonnie? Thank you for that wonderful question. So are you going to read, are you, do, you think, do you have some ideas for how you might read it? Oh, that's true. Right. That's great. Okay. Well, call me. We'll talk. Okay. All right. Yes, please. Um, my name is Stephanie, and Hello. I'd like to know how you make your books. 
Well, that is, that's a great question. There's all different kinds of ways that books are made. So every time I start a new book, it seems like it goes a different way. Uh, this is a sequel to a book that I did years ago called Where's Walrus? And the trick with this book is, is you don't, normally I, for a book that I write, I write the text out. And so I put on one hat, I'm first the writer, and then I put on my illustrator hat and I illustrate the text that I just wrote. So in this case, both the, the, story, the, the, the plot of the story and the pictures are being done at the same time. So really what I just start out with is this little tiny thumbnails and I try to find funny pictures. And then I try to kind of piece them together a little bit like a puzzle. So, and then certain, certain spreads. At one point there was a circus, they were at a circus, and my editor said, oh, don't do the circus and take that out. And at one point they didn't get married at one point, something else happened, and then we decided, oh, put that back in there. So it's a little bit like a filmmaker. You, put, you piece it together a little bit, like, and you, you let the story kind of shape itself a little bit. So, yeah, thank you for that great question. Yes. Hello, what's your name? Lucas. Hi, Lucas. Um, do you like making books? Do I like making books? I love making books. I very much love making books. Um, I tell everybody that um, making books is like uh, is fun in slow motion. It feels like very slow motion because it happens very, very slowly. So sometimes that's a little bit frustrating. Yes. I wish it were faster, but it seems like the good books take a long time to make. Hello. What? Go ahead and take two. Yes. What's your favorite book to read? My favorite book to read? Wow, that's such a great question. I would say it's probably not a book that I've done because when I look at my own books, I think, oh, that's my book. Um, one book that I really love is Harold and the Purple Crayon because it's a little, do you guys like that? Because it's a little bit like Where's Wal, and probably Where's Walrus takes after that a little bit. It's a little open ended. You can kind of, you know, talk it through and there's lots of open spaces and I just I think it's just so wild and crazy and imaginative so I like that book yes my name is Hannah and hi my Hannah question is, how did you come up with the idea for where's walrus well as I said I did a book called where's walrus just plain where's walrus several years ago and the, so this is a sequel to that book so to answer your question I should probably say how did I do where's walrus what happened was, was when I was in art school 20 years ago, we had a class field trip to go out to Coney Island. And they said, go out to Coney Island and go to the aquarium and do a little sketch. So I did a little sketch of some walruses. And then I put some fedoras on them because I thought it was funny. And I, what, I, what I discovered in the sketch was is that a walrus with a fedora looks a little bit like an old guy from Brooklyn. You know, kind of like a, hi, hello. You know, and I thought, and I showed it to my editor, and he said, I think you should do a book uh, with this character in it, where a hat falls on his head and everybody thinks that he is a man. And it was, really the, it was really a great suggestion from my editor. And then, of course, we didn't know how to do it. Then I had to go out and figure it. But this is what happens. Like, you'll have a great idea, and the, and the great idea is, comes quickly, and then you have to solve the great idea. So I have a million great ideas for books. I say, I'm going to do a book about such and such and such, and then I start working on it. It's like, this isn't working. Throw it in the garbage. So this, fortunately, did work. So, um, but it, people have expressed it this way. It, a story begins with the question, what if? And then you spend all these months answering the question, what if a walrus hat fell on his head and everybody thought, and then you go about trying to solve the, the, the problem. And then if you can stick with it and it continues to work, then you have a book. So thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Tell me your name. My name is Amaya. Um, Hi, Amaya. Uh, uh, did, did Go ahead. You, did you need to have a high score of books to do all this? Oh, you mean like did I have to be good in school? And is that what you mean about like yeah, a then you, like then reading you had score? To write the real good books so you could be famous like this. Uh, well, I think that I. Well, wow. Um, <laughs> Thank you for saying that I'm famous. I didn't know. Um, I love reading and I love art and I learned a lot about both things, especially about art. So I think it helps 
to, I think, more than knowing is loving and caring. So I love and care about art and books and stories. And that's what keeps me going. And that's what makes me want to solve the story problem. So, um, but um, am I a person who read tons and tons and tons of books? Mm, not really. I don't think so. So, but I liked probably art more than books. But I think what I did have and what I do have is I love telling stories. So I'm very driven in wanting to tell stories. So, how, how's, are you excited? When you, did you start school? Yeah. How's it going so far? It's doing good. Perfect. Wonderful answer. Thank you. <laughs> is it easy to make books? Is it easy to make books? Does it, has anybody else made books in the audience here? What do you think? Do we have any bookmakers? Do we have any authors or illustrators? I think it's, I don't think it's that easy, but I think that like a lot of things, it's uh, very rewarding and fun, and, um, and nothing that is rewarding and fun comes easy. So it takes a long time. I remember I was working, I don't know if I was working on this book, but my wife was looking over my shoulder as I was working on a sketch, and she says, she said to me, she's gonna kill me when she hears that I'm saying this in front of the whole audience, she says, she says, does, is illustration really this, like, well, I can't remember how she said it. She said, does it really take this long to illustrate a book or are you just slow? <laughs> I turned around and I said, gee, thanks. <laughs> so um, I, I think that it, I think, I think that I, I do take a long time. I think I like to revise and repeat and all that stuff. So I think we're speaking of taking a long time. See, I told you I take a long time. Do we have Do we have time for one more question? What is every item? Oh, perfect. Okay. Yes. Um, hi, name is Seychelle, and hi. And um, and I want to um know that that um in in my school, Tucker Elementary, um, um we 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 make books out of paper and those staplers, and I heard about nonfiction books and fiction books. Wow. Okay. And so wait. So how old are you? Six. You're six. Okay. Well, so I have a six-year-old who's actually walking around in Washington D.C. checking out all the monuments. She loves making books with her stapler, and she started off liking fiction books, and now she's starting to like nonfiction books. So I think there. I think both things are great. Nonfiction and fiction are great. So. And um, and I also know that that nonfiction books like. Like um, the library, my library teacher says that that um, that when you read someone's life, yes, um, it's good to know about it and and to know about the the the, the year a long time ago. I think that's I think it's wonderful to learn about other people's lives. I think it's good for just for your own life. It's, good, it's great to know about how other people live their life and, and, and all the people that we can learn from. So I think that's terrific. Thank you. Perfect. My name's Maya. And Hi, Maya. My question is that, what is your favorite book that you've written? Uh, the favorite, my favorite book that I have written, I would say well, the book that came before this, which was Where's Walrus? So this, Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you very much. You'll receive your payment after this. Okay. No, this was this, the reason that this has a very special place in my heart is, is that this was the first book where I wasn't just the illustrator, so I came up with a story, too. So when I d finished this book, I was both an author and illustrator, so it, it meant a lot in my uh, growth as an artist. Yes. Yeah. Okay, one more, please. Thank you. How do you make books interesting? <laughs> How do I make books interesting? Um, that's a really great question. Um, well, I think that if you work on them and you keep wanting to work on them and you stay interested, then I think other people are going to stay interested. So I had a t an art teacher once who told me that when he looks at art, and he really wants, and he's really involved in the art, and he's really obsessed with the art, it's probably because the person who made it was obsessed and loved working on that too. So 
to answer your question, if you want someone to be interested, you have to be really interested and they'll, they, it'll come through. They'll realize, wow, they really love doing that. It, it, it always comes through. Your effort comes through. So, but I also think of it, does it make you laugh? Is it, in, you know, that's, like I'm, with these books, I just want to make people laugh. I want to entertain people. So, uh, it's sort of like telling a story that everybody wants to listen to. So, yes, thank you. Thanks very much. So can we, uh, those were wonderful questions. I would just like to hear it for all, for everybody who asked the question. And thank you again. Thank you so much. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.